Hey, it's me, Slade, and welcome to Is This Thing On? My guests today, Tressa Ellaby, Patrick Eady, and George Brito. But first, a chance for you to play along. One of the prompts we do all the time is notes, where you find a note or give a note to someone that uh, you, you can do a series of punchlines based on it. I give you the scenario, you write the note. Here's your note, and this is the one you can play along with. Uh, you are dog sitting. You're watching somebody's dog. It's a good friend. It could be whoever you want to be. Uh, you go to the bathroom, you come out, the dog is gone, and the, the people have come home. You don't say anything at all. You hand them a note that says what? That's your prompt. Leave your answer in the comments. We're gonna pick a winner. We'll read it on another episode, and uh, we'll probably give you something. That's How's that for incentive? <laughs> uh, sit back, watch this episode of Is This Thing On? Welcome everybody to Is This Thing On? My favorite show. I say that in front of Jerry and Trey just because they do the show with me on Mondays. Uh, Jerry Wayne Longmire, Trey Tutson producing in the back. Trey fresh back from the Seattle International Comedy Competition where he took third. Uh, third. He didn't win. That's why he's producing this show. Uh, and Jerry Wayne Longmire, of course, I'm joined by Tressa Ellaby, Patrick Eady, George Brito. These are my guests. We'll get to know you guys better uh, in a moment. Goodwill Loden in the back of the house as well. It's uh, a busy night in the Whiskey Brothers studio. Uh, in the news, let's get into it, shall we? Um, it's, it's happening. The trial uh, has finally made its way into the public eye. Ghislaine, Ghislaine, am I pronouncing it correctly? G that Maxwell bitch is uh, <laughs> on trial. And everybody, there's a million takes on it. We're not going to get into the nitty gritty yeah. of that. But we always talk about this off air. The, uh, the jobs adjacent to these big cases, these trials, right? Somewhere in there is a court reporter who's having to write down the most grisly details of this case, uh, which makes me want to ask you guys, have you ever been in a situation, in a job, where you've been uh, confronted with something you didn't think you'd be asked to do, something that was a little uh, beyond your, your job description? Uh, and is that, uh, is that something that an employer should have to tell you? Patrick, let's start with you. 100%. I mean, like that court reporter, though, she's getting like the, uh, the opportunity of a lifetime. She's living a true crime podcast. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she's having the best time of her life. How many mundane, like shitty ta tax fraud cases, corporate, uh, you know, all these slush funds she had to sit through. But now she's like, oh, fuck, I'm going to write a book off this. Right. Baby, you know what I'm saying? The book's going to be called I Didn't Kill Myself, The Stories of Petal Island. You know? <laughs> <laughs> But no, think about it, because like even like you know even working that whole case, it's kind of a wild thing. But like so, I do I do AC work with my dad, so I'm always asked to do I, I do crazy shit all the time. You know what I'm saying? Either it's not just like dealing with customers. Like we had some old lady, we walk in, and it's me, and my dad. She goes, we asked the old lady how she's doing. She's like 90. She's like, oh, I'm just waiting to die. And my dad's, <laughs> my dad's like, well, better not take a check then. Jesus Christ, you know. <laughs> Every time I work with my dad. <laughs> And had she died, he'd have probably asked you to clean it up. No, dude, that's is... why she paid us in cash, baby. No receipt needed. But every time I work with my dad, it's like an episode of Fear Factor, and my dad is Joe Rogan. You understand? It's like, you know, okay, today your challenge is to balance yourself on beams, walk through 30 feet through spider webs, and at the end of the 30 feet, you have to try and not get electrocuted because we don't know which breaker shuts off the furnace. <laughs> and then you got to carry a 50-pound blower motor back to the attic opening. you got to complete this task in under 20 minutes, and if you don't, then I'm going to think you're a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> so compete for daddy's approval turns up on uh, yeah, a list of job descriptions. Monday through Friday, baby, <laughs> 8 to 5. Patrick, Edie, let's go across the table. Tressa, thoughts? Uh, yeah, the, the funny part was is that I end up writing about something totally different. Okay. And just And just thinking of just all the shitty things that people have to do to deliver a message to Ooh, employees, okay. right? So there's an article where a man, he had to fire 900 employees. Like himself, he had on, to himself fire. Himself, on Zoom. On Zoom, and there's a recording. When you Wait, at the same time? At the same time. He did, uh, well, yeah. I guess I guess yeah. one so, by one so would be. So basically, any time his anyone whole year. starts a meeting and be like, uh, yeah, you, it's about to be some bullshit. <laughs> any time you hear that together, it's going to be some bullshit. But what it was, <laughs> um, he they, they did some reports and found out that everybody was only working on an average of two hours a day. So those are the people he let go. Uh -huh. But he didn't say that in the YouTube so he should have told the truth so he should have just just listed it out and just be like look 15 15 minute smokes breaks is not acceptable <laughs> 15 15 <laughs> 15, 
15 minute smoke breaks is not acceptable. You can't get your hair done on company time. You can't have like a like a hot shave and wax on company time. Like you you're not what you can't do is order Uber Eats, clock out, and then clock back in when the food comes. <laughs> Stay clocked out. You're stealing company time. Okay. There's no massages with happy endings. Um, you can't get your highlights done. None of that. Okay. You're not allowed to place a mannequin head in your seat. In your seat. Working smarter, not meetings, harder. Okay. You actually have to be there. So rolling blunt, self-explanatory. You can't do that either. He should just told the truth. So that's, that, <laughs> that's where I, I didn't even go with the I was just yeah that's a just, much better yeah. but much better way of looking at it I think that's a uh, of finding a better way to phrase the things that you need an employee to do yeah that's yeah, <laughs> yeah just yeah trust that LB George Brito next to me uh, thoughts on uh, such a position have you been in one of those spots before no I'm just glad that the uh, the people that had to draw the like the Oh yeah, the uh, the court the the sketch artist. I'm glad they don't have to draw like the horrific acts that the people are describing <laughs> that happen. <laughs> and then it's like in pastels. It's like yeah, I got it. You know. uh, Jeffrey, he, he looked like what? Like, <laughs> yeah, I, don't yeah. like I don't know that light blue is the color for this. Exactly. <laughs> Jeez, that's a terrifying. I guess yeah, that's a. Uh, they don't have to actually draw the stuff that's being said. They just have to draw the people saying it, right? Which means that really you don't have to even show up to be a court. Art, sketch art. You're an artist, right? Kind of. We're going to get to know you here in a bit. <laughs> kind of. I'm going to draw for the court, George. Come on <laughs> Look, I, 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 I you got an associate's degree, yeah. right? Yeah. Come on, let's roll. Come on. <laughs> right. uh, George Brito, Patrick Eady, Tressa Ellaby, my guest. Uh, let's get into it. Let's find out who you guys are. Uh, we'll start right back with you, George. Uh, you just went. Tell the folks who you are. Uh, I was one of the babies in Robocop, too. That was me. Wait, I'm what? <laughs> what is it? That was filmed here in Houston. That was you, Are you could serious? be. No, I was that was in Houston. That was about it. Damn it. <laughs> now I'm disappointed. Uh, I'm kind of a comedy cryptid. Like I've killed. I just don't have any proof. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's Funny. one fuzzy video of a set he did. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> it's a slender man, not George Brito, baby. <laughs> I'm pretty uh, pretty dumb. I even frustrate psychedelics. That's about it. <laughs> psychedelics are very annoyed with me. That's a <laughs> <laughs> they push back. Yeah, that's fair. Like this dumb motherfucker. Uh, you're also an artist. Uh, tell them a little bit about your. Art. Yeah, well, you do all kinds of cool stuff. I paint, and yeah, the, none of it is good. I just, I just like to draw and shit. That's <laughs> a George George Brito, a man of a lot of ego. Uh, <laughs> that's rhyming. Uh, across the table, a man who dresses like he has no ego. Uh, Patrick <laughs> Eady, how are you? Who are you? Doing real damn good. Uh, since we're talking about ego, let me tell you about myself. My name is Patrick Eady. I'm six foot two, 200 pounds of electricity and testosterone. I am tougher than a $2 steak while looking like filet mignon. I am the most <laughs> electrifying man with under 2K Instagram followers. I'm the man of a thousand dick jokes. I'm like Bitcoin in 2009. People keep talking about me, but no one's bought in. I'm not cryptocurrency. I'm concealed currency, and I've got a concealed carry permit for unshakable confidence. I'm a con man who's only out to steal the hearts of America. I got famous white guy face. I look like your favorite white actor. If he couldn't swim, it gets paid in drink tickets. Is that Paul Rudd from Anchorman? No. I think it's that asshole who wears that American flag singlet at Rudyard's. I'm Patrick Eady. That was great. Tressa, yeah. Tressa Ellaby next to him. Yeah. We'll come back around for a round of you look like. Uh, but let's let's go look, to you now. Even, Tell them who you are. Even the white claw that I'm drinking is not gonna <laughs> yield <laughs> that. No, a four loco wouldn't yield to yeah, that. I, I, I'm look. I'm I'm being facetious because I'm embarrassed that it's over here. But you know, <laughs> it's better um, than nothing. Yeah, mine is gonna be boring. Um, yes. apparently, I look. I uh, I'm from Chicago. Born and raised, uh, been doing comedy for seven years, but I've lived in Houston for a long time, um, 15 years, I guess. Um, first thing I wanted to do was make sure that women got paid. So started producing uh, all women comedy shows at the Joke Joint first and have been producing and hosting Lady Bits, mm -hmm. uh, all women comedy showcase for three years. Um, 
did a little TV show, had a little TV experience on a reality show on the Oprah Winfrey Network. Um, she just glosses over. <laughs> yeah, um, that was fun. That was fun. That was super fun. Um, what else? What else? What else? I've done a, a whole bunch of little stuff. I'm an entrepreneur, own, you know, own two businesses, run two businesses, work for myself. Um, and and I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that I never have to go to a potluck again. Isn't that, see, <laughs> like there you I, go. I, I, that I never have. You've to, earned the right. I never have to. We actually have a joke in common in, in, in experience green bean casserole. I never Ooh. have to do that again. There's you both yeah. of you found it, finding the only things funny the and likable about green disgusting. bean casserole. No, it's disgusting. It's absolutely it's disgusting. Absolutely disgusting so yeah if um, you uh if you had to do a round of you look like how would you describe yourself um i guess somebody who likes um dick pics apparently because that's <laughs> what i get <laughs> i look like the bitch that wants them bad do they yes. how, how frequently do you get unsolicited dick pics? Oh, i want to know the least, ratio i don't it, have any it, friends it, who least, will tell me at least a couple of months like it it if I post a picture, they'll just come and just berate me with dicks. They just yeah. So, but if I don't, if I if I'm just yeah, like a Mardi I, Gras parade, basically. But, yeah. but like if I'm just posting flyers or whatever, no big deal. But if I post a, a if I post a thirst trap, I'm gonna get some dick. Understood. Know? So I got got I got random dick yesterday, <laughs> and I was just like, well, just I was up. just like, I mean, let it out. It was huge. So I was like, I don't know if I should be. If I should be interested or offended, and then like or I'm intimidated, like, right? Because it was purple. <laughs> That's an option. It's Wait, purple? It was purple. What so race Thanos was the, dick? This is <laughs> he was my complexion, but the dick was purple. You're only okay? gonna have half that and then, baby. So he wanted to prove to me. He wanted to prove to me. He wanted to prove to me that it that it was in fact brown. So he sent me another picture, and I'm like, okay. But now of in it that not lighting, under duress. But it, I mean, at that point, I'm I'm just I was just like, look, I know this is something you do, so I'm just talking to him. Like, does this work? Because <laughs> did he send you, did he send you his best work, or was it like an in the moment sort of uh, like a selfie? I, I think he has a bank of dick pics, and he chose that one for me. That's and smart. Then, that's when smart. I told him it was purple, he was like, "Well, let me send you another one." So he sends me another one, and I'm like, "But in that angle, the the head is ashy." So, well, I, <laughs> whoa! I like, don't know that he knew he was sending it to a a, a review website. <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> Look, the, the, that's what you have to do. This is this is girl. Cool I have listen. You I gotta am, inspect these these these. I, I am asking out of respect. I don't get my inbox is not inundated with uh, unwanted genitalia. Uh, so yeah, I, I, and if I, you get it, she's crazy. Probably so. If a woman <laughs> sends you, any time a woman gets to the point of like her titty in her mouth, <laughs> she and you unsolicited, she's fucking crazy. Guaranteed. Yeah, the the girls crazy. I'm into can barely get their titties in their mouth. Okay. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> they don't have titties. Okay. <laughs> it's Patrick Eady. Have you ever sent a dick? That's not the question. Uh, uh, <laughs> if we were doing. Saying, this sounds like an incrimination. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that sounds like. <laughs> I plead the fifth. All right, let me get a little distance between that question. No, I'll go to George I, first. George. I, I was going to tell you one other thing I look like. but I, you know, Oh, yeah. What else? And and apparently, like, you know, I said I'm from Chicago, <laughs> right? But my, my roots are from uh, New, from Louisiana, not New Orleans, Louisiana. Southern right? Louisiana? So apparently, yeah, I think it's northern. Franklin. Franklin. Franklin uh, is northern. To, yeah, 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 yeah. I know where you're at. So, like, so basically, I, you know, I'm half Creole, half Whig. <laughs> yeah. <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think it's like it's like five five eighths wig. Yeah. I think you've like, got yeah. you got a, like, a couple more. I'm probably seventy thirty, like <laughs> half Creole, like African American, and half wig. It's uh well you're beautiful and it's good to have you on yeah. the show, <laughs> Tressa <laughs> Elevy, uh one of our guests. <laughs> the, uh, I'm gonna go to George. We're coming. We're gonna finish on Patrick. Uh, George, you look like. Man, I look like. No, I look like a Mayan librarian. <laughs> <laughs> A Mayan <laughs> librarian. Look like the only thing left alive after the vampires attack the village. <laughs> I, I do. I do think of. I think of Twilight every time I see you, George. I swear. I think of dusk. <laughs> <laughs> Look like a doll for a really fucked up kid. That's another one. I think of these a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how many of these were written before we sent the prompt? A few of them. <laughs> I was like, good, I've got a few of these already. Like, 
<laughs> like, like we mean like a Down syndrome kid, <laughs> or what do you, what do you mean? Exactly? Kid with some uh, <laughs> mental problems. <laughs> okay, well, like emotional problems. Emotional problems. <laughs> Not a school shooter, an artist. No. Right. <laughs> not a school shooter, a preschool shooter. Yeah. <laughs> not, a, not, not, a, not a preschool shooter, but, but a pre, pre before, school. before they've shot before school, school up. He's yeah. a sketch artist for a court. That's what <laughs> Eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Working up to it, baby. Any others on the list? What else do I look like? Um, look like I suck blood for THC. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't wear tie-dye shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Well worth the pause. <laughs> George Brito to my right. And across the table, we're coming back Hilarious. to you. Patrick <laughs> Eady, you look like? I look like I send dick pics to Tressa. <laughs> <laughs> I look like my dick's not purple, but it's all ashy. <laughs> uh, I look like I could have been rich in the 80s, but I'm poor in my 30s. Uh, I look like future Magnum DUI. <laughs> I look like Freddie Mercury on testosterone supplements. Oh, God. I look like a 70s porn star up with Fluffer's dick. Um, I look like your mother's nightmare by my mama's boy. She won't even let me move out. Um, I look like if Martin Scorsese directed The Goonies, but instead of finding treasure, they just do cocaine and start 10 different podcasts they don't finish. <laughs> and I literally watch Goonies. <laughs> Goonies is the yeah. best. <laughs> Patrick Eady, uh, our guest, uh, along with Tressa and George, we're going to get into segment three. This one's done well. This has been a fun segment. Uh, we agree. Um, we've been doing dead comedians on the show. Uh, these guys may be dead. It doesn't mean that they can't still tell jokes. I want to know what some of these comics would do if they were comedians. Today, George, I'm going to start with you. You. Okay. Have been, you, you've been given my, this, this is the one I wanted, I think. Uh, I always think about who I would take if I had a choice. Uh, Greg Giraldo. All right. Probably the, no, not even the most recently dead on the list. Jesus. Uh, second. Greg Giraldo, you've been gifted. What would he do if he were a comedian now? Let's see. If they could talk about. I got to do it. You want me to do the well, okay, it's, <laughs> you it's, want me to do the cadence? You do not have to, but bonus points that do not matter bonus will be points, given. All right. All right. Do not but, uh, uh, Texas is worried about abortions. Texas, of all places. Holy shit, have y'all seen this? Some of the worst serial killers come from Texas. Henry Lee Lucas, Dean Coral, Ed Gein. Well, th he's from Wisconsin, but that's just Texas with snow. <laughs> <laughs> they were all born for Roe versus Wade. The only, th the only reason they exist is because the only thing worse than the laws at the time was the education, and some poor girl couldn't find her cervix with the end of a sickle to pull out the fu future monster. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Republicans hate the hammer and sickles, because they just think it's abortion equipment. <laughs> 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 they, no, but they don't want to abort them. And now if, now if you w don't want to talk to the little thing, you just, uh, but you can't bring yourself to beat the shit out of them, all you do is put them on meth their enti entire childhood and hope that they abort themselves before they snap and abort 15 of their classmates. <laughs> Poor kids couldn't keep, couldn't stop making fun of a kid that couldn't act normal on meth. This poor kid. <laughs> uh, George Brito doing Greg Giraldo. Um, uh, well, you're killing the back of the house. Uh, well done. Let's go to you, uh, Patrick. You've been given Robert Schimmel. All right. Let's see what we can do. Can we get some more whiskey? Some uh, more yeah, whiskey? yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you want? So we're doing, I've got a lot of stuff. we got Texas Rangers peach and peanut butter. I've got what's left of the double let's, oak. Let's do the double oak. Double oak sounds nice. There's just enough left. It's uh, yeah, Old Humble you. Distilling's newest. Uh, I feel like Jerry Wayne will still respect me if I drink the double oak, not the flavor so one. He'll respect you, but also be upset because he likes it. I like so. peanut butter. <laughs> All right. Oh, trust right. me. He likes peanut butter, too. All right. I'm doing Robert Schimmel. Um. Uh, I got a VPN to conceal my internet traffic. Uh, my girlfriend walked in on me watching porn. Now I wish I could walk into internet traffic. <laughs> <laughs> my girlfriend wants to start an OnlyFans. And I've always wanted to become a porn director. The only problem is whenever I say cut, the guy won't stop fucking my girlfriend. <laughs> My girlfriend told me I had boyfriend dick. If that's true, then why do I keep cheating on her? <laughs> I think I have public transportation dick. Anyone can ride, and even if it looks clean, it's probably not. <laughs> I'm starting to feel my age. My nephew keeps asking me about starting a Twitch stream. Uh, I told him when I was his age, a Twitch stream was what we called my granddad pissing after his stroke. 
Turns out when you can't fill your left side, you can't piss right in the bowl. <laughs> a lot of people are obsessed with going viral on the internet, but that's only fleeting. I actually went viral in college, and that's for life. <laughs> Fame can be a bumpy road. <laughs> A Georgia woman filmed an erotic video with a gun and shot herself in the pussy. I watched the video. Believe it or not, her pussy looked way better after the gunshot. <laughs> Damn. I was looking at her pussy thinking, man, is that a clit or a target? <laughs> I think I saw those meat trenches on the History Channel during a documentary on World War I. Girl for her, good for her for teaching horny dudes about the Battle of Verdun. <laughs> That's the last one. Uh, my dog won't stop throwing up. First I thought it was because of all the peanut butter. No, I'm sure it's because of my cum. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, Patrick Eady doing Robert Schimmel. I am bringing you back as soon as Bobby Slayton dies. Uh, <laughs> 100%. <laughs> well done. Uh, that's a very good Schimmel. Two for two. Yes. We're kicking it over to Tressa. Tressa, you were given Mom's Mabley. Now, we talked a little bit. You, uh, you, missed, the, you missed the Mom's Mabley part at the beginning, so I'm, I'm curious to know what you did after that, but let's, let's get into the Mom's. Let's go, let's go with Mom's Mabley. All right, so Mom's... Uh, when did Mom's die? When, how, how long ago? Oh, man, I don't even know the year. Trey, do you know? You're a historian. In the 80s, in the 80s yeah, you I think? Thinking, I was thinking the 80s. All right, fair enough. So she's got a, she's got a lot of territory to cover. Yeah. Okay, I don't, I don't, I don't think I could really, you know, do an impression or anything. But who could? Uh, yeah, I, I just can't. All right. Um, so they they said in the news that a fifty year old woman had her first kid. Ooh. If a doctor told me at fifty that I'd be pregnant, I'd just be like, oh, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's no way in hell. I'm 43 and I would not have a baby. Okay. Too bad. Okay. I'm going to wherever I need to go. All right. Um, the world knows. Louisiana at this rate. Yeah. <laughs> the world knows I don't like old men. I like them young. Like Michael B. Jordan from Black Panther. Ain't nothing an old man like Morgan Freeman could do but read my obituary. <laughs> 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 Nothing an old man could do for me but balance my checkbook or give me his. <laughs> or give me his. Ain't nothing an old man can do but drive me crazy, kill me early, and give me COVID and worms. <laughs> God damn. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. COVID and worms. Worms is the one. Yeah. God. Tressa doing Mom's Mabley. Who else did you? So so originally what happened? So originally I just, I didn't see it. I just, I didn't even see anything by it because I'm looking at on my phone. Yeah, I fair. Do everything on my phone. So I just thought I could do any dead comedian. So I was going to do Patrice. Oh, oh O'Neal. And so that's like my comedy idol, right? But Which is good. Some I think of the jokes would have been the same because he always I, does abortion jokes. I and, think we've know. given that yeah. as a prompt and nobody. And no, Paul. We gave it to Paul Odo, and he didn't do it. So, so, so Patrice is wide open. He's never been, he's untouched territory, virgin, if you will. What, uh, what would Patrice would have done an abortion joke? I, but that's the thing. I mean, I think that he would have. He actually says something similar. One of his jokes about pretending that um, he wasn't wasn't happy that his girlfriend had a, a miscarriage. Ah, you know? and so I, I think it would have been. That is Corey Hoker. You're right. You're right. That's Corey As Hoker. a boy, if I'd have That's done right. that, that would have been right. so right. racist. Right. right. <laughs> right. right. I just want to be real clear. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, you assholes. No, but it, it would have been, but I didn't write it. So I'm, I, I didn't write it. It would have been some abortion jokes. It would have. That's, uh, well, now I want to know what, uh, we'll bring you back when we do Patrice yes. again. Yes. Uh, we're getting into notes. This is segment four. This has been a fun segment in the past as well. You guys, you're writing punchlines for these notes. You'll deliver them one after another. Let's see. Um, in which order do I want to go? Who wants to go first? Quick, somebody say something. I'll do it. There we go, Tressa. Volunteer. Oh, um, you pull up to a venue. Mm -hmm. The show uh, is scheduled for the night, but the parking lot is empty. The lights are out. The doors are locked. There is a note on the door that says what? I pull up to a venue. The doors are locked. Note on the door. It says, 
What? <laughs> it says, "What time do you go up?" That's <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get a personal invite. <laughs> uh, what else did I say? Um, sorry, there's no one left to sell tickets to. <laughs> <laughs> Supposed to be pre-sale tickets. Sorry. <laughs> um, we're we're closed so everyone else can go get COVID at the Improv. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Improv. That was it's not personal. It's not Two item minimum though. Right. Uh, so I'm contractually not allowed to laugh at that joke. Right. That is. <laughs> Oh, they don't book me, I'll laugh. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make it not funny. That's <laughs> fucking hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> they were the open. First. They were open April first to twenty twenty. They were. Oh, yeah, they were. Yeah. I mean, with like <laughs> seats in between. <laughs> people, we could finally yeah. get Joe Rogan here. Come on now. <laughs> all right. Was there another note on the door? No. That's, that's all it, of them. All right. It, perfect. It, George, you have ordered food at your favorite local restaurant. You settle in to wait. The server though. Never comes back. It's been a minute. Only the manager shows up. They hand you a note and walk away. What does it read? We don't serve blood here. <laughs> <laughs> Blah. <laughs> it's like, it's like, I love Jesus. Go home. <laughs> <laughs> Music stays low. <laughs> We found your hair in our food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn, I just got here. <laughs> George Brito messing up six orders with that hair. Um, <laughs> and across the table from him, Patrick Eady, you walk out of the store. Your car is gone. I don't know what kind of store it was. I don't know what you're driving. But in place of it is an orange cone with a note attached. It simply says what? Walk, pussy. Sound <laughs> dad. <laughs> and he left half of an air conditioner <laughs> sitting there. That's condenser to you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you can spread it out or stay in short. The inside smells nice. Joe Biden. <laughs> you asked for my birth certificate, so I got your pink slip. Obama. <laughs> Rubber baby buggy bumpers, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> this note doesn't say anything. Someone just rubbed ashes on it. Oh, it's Paul Walker. <laughs> <laughs> what? Is that who sent you the dick pic? That'd be sick, right? Just a whole <laughs> ashtray. I own 50% of the farmland in the United States, and now I own your car, Bill Gates. <laughs> uh, I am Groot Vin Diesel. That's <laughs> Patrick Eady losing his car in the parking lot. All right, home stretch. I know, guys. I know. Uh, we got three more stories. We've gathered them from around the world. You guys got one more segment in you? Which order do I want to do these in? From Austria. Let's start there. An elderly patient's right leg was removed as he went to the hospital. Uh, instead of his left, the mistake was discovered. Some of these words confuse <laughs> me. Two days later. Uh, on Wednesday, the court found the, the surgeon guilty of gross negligence and fined her uh, 2,700 euro, which is somewhere around, I think, $2,500, um, big, big amount. The widow right. of the patient who died before the case even came to court, it gets more comical, uh, was awarded five grand. Uh, the patient went to have his left leg amputated. The surgeon marked the wrong limb for amputation, and it was discovered during a routine bandage change two days later. Ridiculous. Uh, at any point, you are free to jump in Ridiculous. with your thoughts. I, but the, I'm telling <laughs> I'm you, shocked I, by this. I, I swear to you, the first thing I thought is a, a man, he's going to reach down and be like, okay, but is my dick there? That's <laughs> like that, that, see, that, I, because oh. if you're making mistakes like that, you got to check to see if you There was no but is my dick. You check that before you like, even. Like you have to make sure that that's okay. See, that's, that the, that's the first thing I read. I was like, man, if they cut off the wrong leg, like, what if he's like, what if he's had a huge dick and they cut it off? You know what right. what <laughs> <laughs> took away the wrong leg. This <laughs> isn't the one. <laughs> So yeah, at, what, at what point did they did he realize that it was the wrong leg? Like that's what I'm saying. Two days, two days later. Two days. No, like the doctor did. Did they not at some point? Like did he just they commit? Knew. <laughs> they knew. They knew. They just kept on. Pretending. I said he should have just kept going. Like just give him a vasectomy, circumcision. Yeah. I can cut myself cut, out. <laughs> he did that cut thing. One you, toe off. That thing you do when you trip and then you pretend to start running. Yes. <laughs> he, he just sawed faster. Look, y'all gave me the wrong notes. I did everything to him. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> they here's what does the, the mistake was identified during a routine bandage change, and the patient was told he would have to have his other leg amputated as well. Oh, of course. hey, buddy, while we're here with your jello and your fresh bandages, oh, by the way, are you a big fan of Forrest Gump? Because you'd be Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd your legs go, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Dan? Dan. Dan. You wait, wait, Dan. what's the Austrian name for Dan? Is it Don's? It's <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Don's. <laughs> I was supposed to die in that jungle with my friends. <laughs> Did they keep the other leg though? I, they could have just sewn sewn it back onto the. <laughs> that's a, just, he's forever walking the yeah. other direction. <laughs> but if, but if the he, money is not enough. Like there has to be money for. Trust I mean, it. That is a hard earned twenty five hundred dollars. God mean, damn it. You. <laughs> that is. Not, I. I mean, he needs to be. You know, poor little Tink Tink. You know, he needs to. Uh, <laughs> he needs the prosthetics. You know, he needs the money for the all the all the treatments. Yes. N- mental uh, treatments that he needs to have because he can't get no pussy now. No, uh-huh. he's got to hire someone proficient at carrying a backpack. At least he still got his huge dick. At least, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, people but, people go down to Mexico to get like dental work done. He should go down there and see if the cartel will give him a leg. That's right. <laughs> I'm sure they got a few hanging around. <laughs> see, I thought I thought he was still alive because I was like, oh man, at least he'll get great parking the rest of his life. You know uh, there's always an upside. <laughs> Turned him into a fucking pirate. Uh, from the unluckiest to the no, we're gonna save the luckiest. We'll go to this story next. Uh, this is booking very soon. Uh, one night only. It actually today you can book it. Uh, we probably missed it. No price has been set, so I don't wow. know what it went for today. One of them can probably look it up and yell it at me. Uh, the Home Alone House in Chicago. The winning bidder will get an immersive Home Alone experience, thrilling. Uh, to the bed set comforter seen in the. I'm sorry, I'm reading this. There's a paint bucket hung from the ceiling. This sounds so fucking dangerous. And a bronze yes. statue that was hit by Little Nero's pizza delivery car. Uh, it's a 1.5 million dollar home. In Chicago, would you would you rent this Airbnb? Would you go to stay in the I, Home Alone I, house? I'm from Chicago, so a 1.5 million dollar house looks just like this house that we're in now. That's <laughs> no, it's gonna be some some astronomical ridiculous shit. Nobody can be that much of a nerd. To want to do I've that seen shit. Home Alone. The house does not look like this house. <laughs> no, I, no, also, I'm too, just, the since the home is in Chicago, there's a good chance they're gonna have to fight off burglars. That's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't want to stay in there. They, yeah. they haven't made any any repairs since that movie came out. Honestly, it'd Very be true. worth it if they got like they just put Joe Pesci in the house too. You just couldn't talk to him or make eye contact the whole fucking time. It's like, don't look at me. <laughs> yeah, man, and the ego, George. I just hope that no, did they leave the. A swarm of birds from the second movie in there just to walk around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's cool. across, like, not even the right movie. What the? Fuck? It's all the props from all the movies. <laughs> yeah. Donald, like, Donald Trump walks in, he's like, "What the fuck is this? Yeah. <laughs> Why is this new kid from the Disney movie in this? This is guitar and feather him and shit." <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they do that? Yeah. Oh, they they, they were the worst. The, what were they? The Wet Bandits? Was that the yeah, The Wet Bandits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's. A, I would do that. I would do the. Can I have a calling yeah. card. But it's calling probably, card. I, it's probably a crack den next door. It's 100%. Right, it, yeah. That's why it's affordable. That's why you can rent it. <laughs> it's the only. <laughs> it's Do all the traps work when you go in there? Like every the single one of them. Like it's you get a, to step oh, on glass so and shit. A, like, it's <laughs> a, like it's the epitome of a trap house. It's an actual it's trap house. <laughs> they have the nails on the stairs. Yeah, they the got ready for it. Incoming so. dick pics. Oh, you said trap house. All right, here we go. <laughs> man accidentally bought two identical lottery tickets. The luckiest man in the world. Uh, he's won big after purchasing two of them. He's from uh, from the UK. I was just lying in bed watching a basketball game on TV, and I couldn't remember if I filled it out or not. So I went ahead and filled it out again. The next morning, my son asked me why there were two different amounts listed. I realized, I think I filled it out twice. I couldn't believe it, he said. That's as exuberant as he got. I couldn't believe it, he said. $25,000 a year for life times two. He's making 50K a year times two. He's normal. Well, yeah, he gets a, an upper middle class lifestyle. Right. That's it. <laughs> but, but he's got to do he's nothing normal. but watch, watch the game on the telly. But apparently, though, he, he, <laughs> no. he, he, he wanted to get the, the payout. So he got $780,000. So he won the lottery twice and he's still not a fucking millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> What if he left the convenience store and gets hit by lightning twice? <laughs> 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 and no, not, but he can afford to fucking rent that Home Alone house now, though. It's good for him. 
<laughs> but taking the seven hundred eighty thousand, that's going to be better than being, you know, part time at T Mobile. Well, he's still going to be part. He's going to have an upper middle class lifestyle for like ten years. He's going to have to still work. He's making and ta- and taxes hey, in UK are fucking Bitcoin, crazy too. Dogecoin, I'm Abs- telling absolutely you, no. He's tax gonna... fraud. Tax fraud. <laughs> PPP loans. No, I'm just saying he can invest it. Yeah. It's called a trap house at that yeah. point. <laughs> Tries to way more it. optimistic than anyone yes. else at the table. George? Do they really keep giving you the money? I feel like they forget about you. <laughs> <laughs> they hope you forget. Yeah, they, I don't get my way check. Way so they treat you the way most people treat their <laughs> Patreons. <laughs> <laughs> right. Spotify account. That's like, oh, eventually someone's not going to look at this. <laughs> Uh, we have, I think, we have rounded the bases. If there are no punchlines left, did anyone leave anything on the table? Anybody, anybody have a punchline they forgot? Mm. All right, perfect. Let's find out where to get you on social media, uh, George Brito. Where are you? Uh, pimp your comedy and your art. Uh, on, mostly on Instagram. George Brito sucks. B r i t o s u x. I got I'll, my paintings and shit are on there. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna make it with this attitude. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, and I also run a show on Thursdays at Avant Garden. There you so go. Yeah. Called what? God damn it. God damn it. It's a great God show. It, uh, yes. Thursday nights at Avant Garden here in Houston. Tressa, you run Lady Bits, but also yes. uh, where can they find you? Um, everywhere. So Tressa T R E S S A underscore E L E B Y on Instagram, and I still have my original hack name, comedian Tressa. <laughs> oh, but you grew out of it. Yeah, That's I did. I did. I. It's gonna take a minute to you know. The so matter you, you turn the corner. Stuff. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So uh, Lady Bits is Saturday at the Secret Group, uh, featuring uh, Nitra Babin. So it's gonna be great. Awesome. You always awesome. put on fantastic shows. The Secret Thank Group you. Saturday night. Tressa yes. Ellaby, my guest, and finally, as we round the final base, Patrick Edie, where can they find you? They can find me on Instagram at Coors Light Poppy seven one three L I T E. Uh, I run four shows in Houston. I run Bad Idea with Kate Vance. It's the first Friday of every month. It's outdoors. It's a great time at Secret Group. I run American AF. That is the first Thursday at Rudyard's. Brought to you by The Riot. It's a great fucking time. It's one of the craziest shows around. I also run Current with Chad Alexander. It's the first Sunday of every month. We write all, entirely two top, uh, topical news like kind of set. And that's a lot of fun. First Sundays every month at Rudyard's. And I'm also starting a new crowd work show at Rudyard's. It's the fourth Thursday of every month. Because uh, Trey moved. <laughs> <laughs> and it's called Off the Dome. <laughs> Lots of fun. Plenty of opportunities. Uh, all of my guest show producers here in Houston, Thursday nights, Saturday nights, and uh, multiple nights. Uh, follow what they do. Follow what we do. Everything collectively at Praise Whiskey. Uh, the best of this show always on our YouTube page. That's where we encourage you to find us the most. Uh, the Whiskey Brothers. Thanks to Jerry Wayne Longmire, Trey Tutson in the background running all of the shop. And uh, to you guys, we'll have you all back. Thank and uh, I'm out of whiskey, but uh, cheers. Thanks uh, for symbolically, on, cheers. Thanks, man. Appreciate to y'all. Slancha.